Good morning and a very warm welcome to yet another webinar of Steelmins Engage 2.0, a five-day webinar series to discuss the changing market dynamics of steel sector. On behalf of Steel Mint, I would like to extend sincere thanks to Ministry of Steel and Indian Steel Association for supporting this event. Also, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our esteemed sponsors, NMDC, JSW Steel, and Tata Steel. This session is on Tokyo Steel's strategy on the dynamism of global scrap flow. I'm Nishtha Mukherjee, your host for the session. I would now like to welcome our esteemed speaker for the session, Mr. Gaku Ito, General Manager, Sales Department at Tokyo Steel, Japan. Tokyo Steel is the biggest Japanese electric furnace steel producer, which is into manufacturing of both flats and beams. Mr. Ito is responsible for export sales at Tokyo headquarters. He has a rich experience, especially in the HRC trade market, such as North America, Europe, China, and other Asian countries. He is also in charge of the sales development of flat products to promote environmental friendly EF steel making amongst the Japanese steel consumers. Welcome, Ito san. Before I hand over the floor to Mr. Ito, fewer preliminary remarks from my side. Please allow me to share my screen. Uh, I hope my screen is visible. Yes, so let's have a quick look at the Seaborn ferrous scrap trade uh, in calendar year 21. So uh, if we look at the key importing countries, the total Seaborn ferrous scrap trade uh, moved up by about 5% in calendar year 21 versus calendar year 20. So pent up demand uh, from the 2020 post lockdown measures and revival of economies from the lockdown restrictions, rise in the crude steel output resulted in improved ferrous scrap trades. World's largest ferrous scrap importer, Turkey, witnessed an increase of 10% in its yearly ferrous scrap imports in calendar year 2021. And import volumes stood roughly around 24 million tons. All the major countries witnessed sharp increase in their yearly import volumes, except Vietnam, India, Pakistan, and Taiwan. Now let's have a quick look at the exporting countries, EU, estimates to be have fallen the export volumes by around 14%. However, export volumes from US rose roughly by 7% on YOY basis. Scrap export volumes from Japan fell significantly by 23% in calendar year 21 to just 7 million tons. This was again due to the tighter availability of scrap and increased domestic scrap consumption. Well, on the pricing front, if we see, uh, we have been seeing a sharp recovery in uh, Japanese ferrous scrap prices, both in exports as well as in domestic. Uh, to tell you about the export, so today morning, the uh, Japan's monthly Kanto scrap export tender, uh, which was scheduled, fetched bits higher by $1.65 per ton on monthly basis. And yes, of course, the bits are already hitting a multi-year high. So we expect the Japanese ferrous domestic prices also to increase sharply in the near term. So that was all that I had to present from my end. As a gentle reminder, uh, I would request all the attendees to put in their questions in the chat box, which would be taken up after Mr. Ito's presentation. Let me now turn to our esteemed speaker. I would request Mr. Ito to share his insights now. Uh, over to you, Ito-san. Okay, thank you. 
So I share my slide. Sorry, I checked the file. Can you see the file? Yes, it was and it's visible. Okay, okay. Yes. So my presentation should start. So good morning, everyone. So thank you for taking time for me to speak our strategy. Today I speak on Tokyo Steel's strategy on dynamism of global scrap flow. I am Gaku Ito. I am responsible for export sales in the company. So COP26 was held in Glasgow last year. World Steel Association said in blog that near zero emission steel is a prefer preferred choice in global market with efficient use and near zero emission production in every region by 2030 or earlier. Here are carbon neutral options of steel making. Electric arc furnace with scrap, which is already established. So hydrogen based uh, DRI, which is an option in future. Blast furnace plus carbon capture utilization and storage which I suppose is not so effective. Hydrogen base uh, brass furnace, which is a technology in far future, even if it is possible. The legislation for carbon neutrality and its action come out recently. EU taxonomy is proceeding and EU ETS emission trade system is working. CVAM carbon border adjustment system is coming in 2023 for steels and aluminums. Carbon surcharge pricing by plus finance mills is applied. So we know now that carbon is money. Global manufacturers, such as automakers, home appliance makers, need to reduce embodied carbon of steel made products as soon as possible. Using EAF steel is primarily shortcut to the goal. Here you can see EAF ratio of the world. EAF in the world is about 30%. EAF ratio is over 70% in USA. But in Japan, it is only 25%. As the context, although USA is the second largest emitter of greenhouse gas next to China, the emission from steel sector is only 0.6%. In Japan, in contrast, the emission from steel sector is 13%. Steel accounts for 40% in total 
industrial sector. Why is it so different? One of the factors is electric furnace ratio. Now it is time for Japanese electric furnace mill to expand that share because Japan is the third largest steel making country in the world. It is not just local issue in Japan, but it is a global issue. I show three key factors of profitable electric funds. Number one is stable supply of electricity. Number two, of course, availability of efficient steel scraps from domestic market. Number three is a technology to produce good quality steel from scrap. Electricity supply in Japan had been very stable for a long time. But after the accident of nuclear power plant in 2011, most of nuclear power plant stopped operation. Now, renewable energy based electricity is increasing. In case of solar power, the amount of output fluctuates due to weather condition. Tokyo Steel's contributes the growth of the solar power as a buffer of electric, electricity consumption. We change our shift of operation soon after short notice from power companies. We can produce more steel with lower cost when the power excess, they are focused. As for number two and three, we will, I will explain our circumstances, uh, that our circumstances in the following slides. In Japan, scraps have accumulated as ec economic growth. We have about 1.4 billion tons of scraps inside Japan, inside Japan but the speed of accumulation slowed recently. We have plenty of scrap resources in Japan, but regrettably, the resources are exported a lot. Japan is the second largest exporter of scraps in the world, next to USA. In Asia, Japan is the biggest supplier of steel scraps. The quantity of export in 2020 was the record, 9.4 million tons. Uh, the third exporter is Russia. We have to also watch the impact of the invasion now. Uh, this is a destination of uh, scrap exports from Japan. Uh, this uh, destination is, have changed. China, which is red color, disappeared in 19, uh, sorry, 2019. Korea in blue is decreasing recently. Instead, Vietnam in green is rising. China bought 2 million of scrap, 2, 2 million metric ton of scraps per year before. It was mainly mixed metal, which were low grade scraps. But China banned its import in 2018. In 2021, last year, they reopened the market for import but only for good scrap, such as HS grade. Now I follow up 
the Chinese policy movement on steel sectors. China government, Chinese government announced that they would achieve carbon neutrality by 2060. Restructuring the steel industry is the government key policy. They will save natural resources and reduce steel production and, in, and its export. And they will increase scrap utilization up to 30% by 2025. 20, Towards that goal, Chinese government permitted import of prime scrap in January last year. So, Japanese scrap exporters expected that China would import huge quantity of scrap such as 10 million tons. But results were not excited. They imported, China imported only 500,000 tons only in 2021. Japanese price were too expensive for China. They bought Japanese scrap prices were too expensive for China. They bought semi products a lot from other countries, not scrap. On the other hand, electric furnace are expanding everywhere in the world. There are many new investment of EAF in USA. Nucor, Nucor Steel, Steel Dynamics, Big River Steel, US Steel also. They need more scraps, especially prime grade scrap. They will produce high quality flat products with EAF. Their way of making good quality is to use prime grade scrap and HBI to dilute obsolete scraps, which contain many elements such as kappa. The export volume of scraps must be lower from USA, which is now number one scrap exporter in the world. In Japan, Tokyo Steel has vision to expand and Nippon Steel will build big size EAF. In Korea, Costco will have two EAF, new one. In Europe, there are about 38 million tons of new EAF are planned. And we have to keep eyes on Russia situation, Russian situation also, because they are big supplier of steel scraps and many scrap raw material, uh, steel raw materials. But I cannot anything about now, now, about it now. It's unforeseen at this moment. Here, I introduce Tokyo Steel briefly. We are the biggest and the most innovative EAF in Japan. We have four mills and produce 2.5 million tons per year. We have large variety of products, hot roll coil, GI, and plate, H beam, deformed bar, and so on. All the items are produced with EAF. Export ratio about 30%. We are awarded as the A class of carbon disclosure project, CDP. 
in 2021. There is only one steel manufacturer in the class A. This picture is our Tahala works, main works. We publish our future vision named Tokyo Steel Eco Vision 2050 for carbon neutral, neutrality. In the vision, we declare we will expand our production to 6 million tons in 2030 and 10 million tons in 2050. We aim to increase EAF share instead of last finance to reduce carbon in society. We are developing new fields of EAF. Expansion in flat product is a key. We produce good quality flat steel with obsolete scraps, which are in excess in Japan. We don't need pig iron, HBI, DRI. We can control difficulties of trump elements with facility and the process control. Our slogan is upcycling, not just recycling. We utilize alloy elements in steel scraps and upgrade recycled steel quality. Here, here are some introductions of our facilities to make good quality steel with obsolete scrap. Our scrap yard is all in-house with no man control. Visualize the computer shows the grades and quantity in each virtual district. Our furnace is the world biggest. The size is 420 metric ton. We average variation of steel, uh, scraps, chemical composition in it. We have vacuum degassing furnace also. Continuous casting machine is conventional and the vertical type with soft deduction. In Japan, the obsolete scraps are about 70% of all the scrap in the market. The biggest generating sector in it is construction. It's about 37%. Industrial scrap is 30% of market. The biggest sector in it is automotive. It's about 56%. We use obsolete scraps as much as this generating ratio in domestic scrap market. Now, the quality of obsolete scraps in Japan is deteriorating because of the following factors. Use small size home appliance are increasing. China banned mixed metal import and the low grade scraps flow back to Japanese domestic market. So other domestic EAF need more prime scraps to dilute the non-ferrous element even for making reinforcing bar, but we don't need, Tokyo Steel don't need to delete it.
So let's look at what happened in Japanese scrap market briefly. Tokyo Steel's purchasing price of scraps is like market indicator in the world. Export price is not attractive for domestic dealers because domestic price is firm. It means that Tokyo Steel's purchasing price is good for dealers. Shipping difficulty for export also come out now at this moment. Industrial scrap generation drops for a while with stagnation of automotive production, production due to semiconductor shortage. Much premium for prime grade scraps are required now. Blast furnace mills buy scraps to adjust their productions. All of the above are the symptom of the coming futures. In conclusion, I mentioned on the relation of future of the global scrap flow and our EcoVision 2050. Investment of EAF keep going everywhere for carbon neutrality. Export of scraps from USA and Japan will decrease a lot. The amount of accumulation of Japanese scrap is huge, but new scraps from automotive sector is going to drop because automotive industry will shrink due to electric vehicle shift and downward sales in Japan, which link population decreasing. Japanese plus furnace mill plan to build big, big size EAF for carbon neutrality. They need more scraps, but mainly new scraps. And China also needs prime scraps. So supply demand balance of prime grade scraps will become tighter and tighter. But obsolete scraps keep in excess because slowed construction activity in Japan will make other EAF mills which make construction steel only, decrease their production. Tokyo Steel upcycle the obsolete scraps with its point of good, its good points of alloy elements and will achieve the EcoVision 2050. So thank you for listening. So my presentation, my presentation is over. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ito Sam. That was really a very detailed presentation about Japanese scrap market, as well as uh, with a special emphasis on uh, Tokyo Steel's uh, vision, carbon neutrality, and uh, how the Japanese scrap market will pan out uh, in the near term. A few questions uh, that I can see already popping up in the chat box. And uh, before we take the audience questions, uh, I have a couple of questions from my end to ask to you. Uh, my first question would be, uh, as you already mentioned that uh, because of uh, chip shortages, uh, auto production has taken a hit in Japan. And because of that, uh, scrap generation uh, is again low. So when do you see uh, things improving in Japan? 
Uh, it's very, very difficult situation, uh, question, because uh, maybe uh, I can say uh, one month ago, so it is maybe from April, but now Russian invasion happened. So more complex. So I cannot say anything. It's very difficult question. So automotive uh, industries, people also don't know maybe at this moment, very complex. Okay. And uh, do you uh, expect prices to move up further from the current levels, uh, both in exports as well as in the domestic market? You for mean the scrap price? scrap price? Yes, yes. scrap prices in Japan, both for exports as well yes. as for domestic. Yes, yes. Because uh, as you mentioned today, so scrap uh, tender, export tender also jump up today. We will follow soon, maybe in one hour. <laughs> so this uh, situation will continue because all of the uh, raw materials due to Russian prices move up sharply. So everybody can uh, have to follow. Uh, also, uh, Ito-san, you mentioned about uh, logistical constraints that uh, you know these scrap dealers face while they export scrap from Japan. So mm -hmm. if you could just highlight on that thing uh, related to, is it on vessel availability or on the uh, increase in the freight rates that we have been recently seen, especially in the case of Japan? Uh, this is also complex. And uh, now the freight freight rate is uh, surging up sharply, and also in the everywhere in the world, the uh, ship uh, vessel itself uh, stagnated uh, congestion with, uh, around the world. It's because of the first issue is a uh, coronavirus, COVID nineteen. So Stevedore shortage, truck shortage, and et cetera. So the loading and discharging is a slow and slow. So vessel on the ocean, number of the vessel on the ocean is decreasing. So we, we have to, uh, it's very difficult to catch the best, uh, vacant space. So this is uh, also for steel uh, products also, not only for scrap. Understand. Uh, also, uh, yesterday we recently come, came across an update that uh, Tokyo Steel has suspended its uh, domestic as well as export sales of steel uh, due mm. to storing raw material prices and uh, yes, the yes. uncertainty in market trends. Mm. So uh, is it for all the products? Uh, I mean, both flats and longs and uh, uh, yes, 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 yes. Could... Okay. Because uh, so we knew uh, t today is a tender day. So we knew the jump up. So we have to see the uh, results. And after maybe we will uh, increase our passing products, uh, passing uh, uh, price also. And uh, we have to see the reaction of the scrap dealers and the market in the product, market of the products also. But uh, we will uh, soon start again. Okay, so uh, probably uh, any timeline or it's, uh, you know, still after the uh, global trade tensions ease out, we'll take a con on that. Uh, any any timeline that is fixed that we have suspended our steel sales uh, uh, for both uh, the flats as well as longs products or uh, we are still uh, taking a view on the scenario and as per the situation uh, we will again resume the sales. Uh, yes, uh, we just just uh, checking the situation and we will soon start again. Okay. And uh, do you uh, anyhow see China making a great impact in the Japanese scrap export volumes in calendar year 2022? Uh, it depends on the price. Uh, Chinese market is very rational. 
they don't need, uh, they don't want to buy a, a expensive price. They uh, is the the market is always uh, which uh, what product is the best best mix. So if the scrap price is higher, they will choose the semi products. The semi is higher, they will choose the scrap. So it depends. Uh, so Chinese market uh, participant is uh, very clever and uh, it's very good at uh, making money. So always see the market. So if the scrap price in Japan is uh, expensive, they don't buy. So Understand. Tokyo still have to protect Japanese scrap market. Understand. And uh, uh, in your presentation, you pointed out, uh, Ito-san, that uh, prime scrap availability in Japan uh, mm. is getting tight. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, one question in the uh, chat box from the audience has come up that if you could highlight on the prime scrap categories, uh, what does it comprises of and what all categories does it include? Mm -hmm. what, uh, what, are, what do you mean? What, uh, category, uh, like prime scrap categories, if you could just elaborate on that. And uh, category? What, yeah. Category and, means uh, name. Yes, name and uh, the future prospects. Uh, for 2022 and 2023. Uh, the category is uh, HS grade and and also the bonus grade. Do you know Shindachi from the automotive automotive se sector? Pure scrap. Okay. But uh, this is uh, not on, only Japan. And, uh, in the USA and the other area, uh, the situation, uh, supply demand balance will will be getting tighter and tighter because uh, normal electric furnace mill need prime grade more than obsolete scrap because, because they have to dilute the chemical composition of the alloy elements to make good steel. So the the price, the premium for the frame grade scrap will higher and higher. So our strategy is uh, opposite. We don't use much the prime grade and we use the lower placed obsolete scrap. So this is uh, our choice, but the only way to compete. If we use uh, expensive scrap, we cannot compete. But uh, other electric furnace, uh, electric furnace mill and also blast furnace mill, they need also scraps, but they only use, uh, blast furnace mill only use the prime grade scrap. So always tight. All right. Uh, next question uh, is that what is the percentage of the end of life vehicle scrappage of the total scrap generation in Japan? Are there any new ventures being established in Japan to source end of life vehicle scrap? New venture? I, I, I don't know. So I don't know the figure of the percentage of the end of vehicle uh, scrap, but we are the number one uh, con uh, consumer of the end of the life, end of life vehicle. We used about uh, over 30,000 30, vehicle uh, per year, but I don't know the exact figure now. But I can check. I will inform you later. Sure. I think uh, we have taken up uh, almost a majority of the questions that came in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that was the last question uh, that, that we could accommodate uh, in this session. Again, a big thank you 
to you ito san and mm -hmm. all the viewers for joining in and we do hope that uh, you like this session and the insights uh, that we discussed over here were would have been surely useful to you also we would like to extend our gratitude to our supporting associations isa and ministry of steel and also our sponsors nmdc jsw steel and tata steel